This is Zaspi Dread, the Imperial Mogul, and we having that mogul talk right now with Timmy on Who That? Blow it! Pick and choose, pick and choose. We get every dog, we don't got shit to lose. Half and all, feel this misconstrued. But even through it all, you know you still my muse. Still my muse, still my muse. We get every dog, we don't got shit to lose. Half and all, feel this misconstrued. Even through it all, you know you still my music. Welcome back to Who Had It It's here with SP Dread, Shady Boy. So Shady, you've been doing this a while and from I know you from primary school, high school, C O B. Uh so obviously you shout your name, but why you say Shady Boy? Like most people try to find a nickname or but I guess you want to stay close to who you actually are. Uh Shady Boy isn't really my stage name anymore. It's still I know, it's, it's, it's SP Dread. That's like me, it's SP Dread, yeah. In a sense, but uh, it's Shady Boy was my actual nickname since I was like knee high, but due to the fact that we have another Shady here yeah, yeah. locally, so I decided it only makes sense to change my mm -hmm. stage name to avoid confusion. So I went with uh, an abbreviated uh, version of my name, SB, and then Dread. I added that on just to give it that <laughs> nah soft flavor, you know. <laughs> so that's about it. They, so. They, so who did I also to find out like why the artist got music like so I wanna know who you heard, who you saw, whether internationally or nationally, like what made you decide I wanna get into music, I wanna do rap, I wanna do this full time, I will I this I wanna pursue this passion. Uh I've been doing well, I've been into music for as long as I can remember. Well, like I said, even when my name was Shadi Boy, which was my name since Nii, uh I actually had this conversation with somebody recently, but I think when I actually started to say I wanted to do music it was uh, probably when DMX dropped It's Dark, it's, it's Dark and Hell yeah, is Hot, yeah. And that's when I actually started writing songs. They weren't good because I was probably like, what? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, probably, I probably was like eight or nine yeah, at the time. Yeah. But like I kept doing it up until high school. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met uh, a lot of different other artists that still do music to this day. Mm -hmm. And seeing them actually making songs uh, on Cool Edit, just way before we, we had access to Pro, Pro Tools. So seeing them making songs on Cool Edit, I decided to do the same, and I just kept going from there. And like you say, back in high school, so you had Shalon, you had Basu, you were part of Travis, um, J Complex, uh, people know him as Kizzy, Scully, um, Chase, um, it's been a while. And just yeah. talk to me about being around them from for years now, what it means, that's Iron Chapter and Iron. So I know a lot of times, um, and within your circle, you probably have a lot of battles with, between each other. So tell me how important that is that you have that circle of friends who into music, who rap, who are talented, and makes you better. With something else, a lot of bohemian rappers don't have over here because it's them, and they have their friends. But their friends aren't the caliber of rappers. Them, but they didn't. They, they, their friends are the photographer, the graphic artist. But your friends are actually other rappers on your level. So yeah. talk to me how, because that, that's something unique. Just talk to me about that experience. Uh, it's a unique experience because with. With us, we we wouldn't hesitate to tell you if something you did was nice or something you did was trash. And even in that same sense, we would tell you, hey, everybody thinks that they're they're the best at what they do. So they, people wouldn't hesitate. People in the group, they wouldn't hesitate to say, yo, I killed you on this, yeah, yeah, or I bought you on this. So it it keeps you sharp because you don't want to have somebody like one of your friends always holding that over you, like, hey, you know, I I, I wash you on so on so and so, I wash you on this. I can't. So you, you always have to stay on your tip top you got to stay sharp you can't just uh fall off or say i'm gonna take this this one verse off you always have to bring it because they they always come with it i don't uh like uh i don't know if you heard uh we are not the same on the the, the ep the, yeah the actually the, right but before we get to your ep i want to go back to my favorite moments in cob the what's the beauty bass um, Tay, talk to me about recording that, because like people at that point in time, this is my I think this was y'all, but second year and see was my first year in CUB. So coming in, this I, I knew y'all from school because y'all was like yeah ahead of me. But coming in, I see y'all had a full photo shoot, y'all album cover. Like there's something people in our age group wasn't doing. So y'all had like a full roller. This was when Facebook was just popping. Remember y'all had um um y'all know my Shinu and Steven, y'all had this laugh all over the tape. Like it was just a good time in our in our in our lives. Like just having fun in college, yeah. uh, but. Talk to me about that tape, like putting the size. Like, okay, I ain't just gonna do this on social media. I about to just put out an actual project. With that, that was a fun time. Like you said, that was a fun time because we did everything up at Gizzy's house. Everybody knows him as J Complex. We recorded 
the entire thing up his up at his house. So I this was before I even had a car or anything like that. So I was catching the bus and catching rides up to Gizzy's place to record my verses. And with the photo shoot, uh, our mutual friend, uh, Christian, everybody knows his, knows us knows her as Reds, but mm. she she found out that we were doing the photo shoot. And she asked if we were doing, and we were doing the project. She asked if we would, if we were doing any uh, like artwork or anything like that. So she t she told us one of her friends does it, and with that she introduced us to Blair. Now Blair, the greatest, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest, the greatest, Blair J Meadows. Yeah, Blair J Meadows. She does. I I don't trust anybody else to to shoot my photos or edit anything that I have. It's always Blair. Since when I met her back then, this is my first time meeting her. Uh, I see. I, didn't know, I thought she was cool from in school time. No, we met her. Like I said, that was our second year in COB. That was like 2008. Yeah, yeah 2008. And since then, she's she's always done all our graphics, all our photos, and different things like that. But it was because of Christian. She told us that Blair could do it for us. So we short. She sent us some of Blair's work. We. Uh, contacted her, she said she'd be down to do it. Then we shot it up at the hill, R.I.P. to the hill, because everybody remembers. That's yeah, where yeah, all that, the, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's where a lot of different uh, songs got recorded, but now nah, it's, it's no more. But yeah, that's where we shot that first Would To Be Without Bass uh, cover. We did it up at the up at the hill. Mm -hmm. And then after uh, that, everyone's like, oh, flip, we need solo projects for everybody. Um, but I think one of my favorite bass songs, I've told you before, is Big Spender. And you actually, between you and James, are my favorite verses on Big Spender. So talk to me about the Big Spender. I wasn't on Big Spender. No? 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 no I, I remember. I row you for that. that was yeah, I wasn't on Big Spender. I, I didn't have any time to, to record, so and they couldn't wait on me. So. <laughs> yeah, so. It's like it's, like it's 2 and 2 5, we got with Johnny. Yeah, so, so they just went and <laughs> finished it without me. Mm. They put it out without me, so I didn't have any time. Like, that. that during that time, I was working, and music started to become less and less a prior of a priority. And I feel like because of that, like I I'm, I'm playing like catch up now because I took a lot of time off between that what to be without bass up until last. Okay, not let me not say last year until 2014. That's when I started like working doing on, yeah, yeah doing working on project and doing features and different things like that. But yeah, that. That was that was like what 2010, 2011, yeah, like yeah. around that time. Rocky drop. Out, yeah. yeah, and then I didn't do anything from then straight up until 2014. So that that played a big part in me like falling behind everyone because this was when Scully and Trav Travis they were putting yeah, out. Yeah, he had four tapes. Yeah. Chem chemistry, Kira, yeah. I even dropped this project, and it's like a, a running joke. Like the, the project was detox. Yeah. Um, I was so happy when, your, when my life transition came, finally came out last year. But just talk to me about because I know you had issues. With, it was uh, a, lot, a lot of things going on while your tape didn't come out. Um, you, and it wasn't like you wasn't trying. You had the the, the artwork with Blair did. Yeah. Um, you had the, the track came out and it was like a. a so just talk yeah, to me about that I, period and, and and really sitting down and saying, you know, what, I can put this EP out. Uh, yeah, like during that time when the art, like like you said, Blair, she did the artwork and I had like several songs recorded that was gonna make it like. 10 songs and I had a hard drive the hard drive, I didn't I this I was doing I was doing all the mixing and everything myself mm -hmm. and I didn't I was I was basically a novice so nobody told me say hey you know you have to always like back up mm -hmm. everything that you do onto like another hard drive and doing all this uh the hard drive crash and only that one song that was already out mm -hmm. ended up getting kept so that was that with that and I I that that sort of like killed my spirit, so I just left it like that, and I I said I would work on other stuff. I was still writing during this time, but nothing ever came out that I wrote until I actually did the EP because a lot of verses and like songs on there, like songs I had for a minute. I remember you messaged me because you had a Chris Paul line on the Hornets, and like that was the day that um, Chris Paul got traded to the Lakers, and then yeah. the clip was like, but like I haven't used this song because it was such a dope line. But you gotta yeah, use the line. Can't use the line. Yes, I. There's, there's a lot of like. A lot of stuff I couldn't use because so much time passed and the lines wouldn't make sense anymore. Like, Whoa, where, did he, where did he record this? Yeah, so I was like, I, that Chris Paul line, I still remember that. I I wish I could still use it, but I can't. 
And then uh, it was a point where you were like the J Electronica. So where we'd always tell everybody like, oh, I shot some of the best rappers in the night. I saw they would be like, where the music is, where the music is. Yeah. And like, and thankfully you dropped the EP. So you still you no longer the J. You in you in the Ghost no more. You in a, you in the Phantom. You actually have a project out. And my life. So talk to me about the EP. And I and I, and I like the fact that it's um, my life transition because I feel like you still transition because before I get to the EP, I want to leave another you Also, not just the music, but you also have the bigger aspirations. Like you want to be the Diddy. You have the yeah. the mogul side. So you had the trap mogul, which is an imperial mogul. Yeah. And I still have one of the shirts I wear, but but once a week the trap mogul shirt I bought for you. So uh, a few people that bought the shirts, they were like, they 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 hit me up like, so I so I can't wear the shirt anymore because <laughs> because because it, you you changed the name and it isn't gonna be promoted. You can still rock it. You can still rock it. Still, like, you gotta start somewhere. So people when 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 the brand is someplace I wanted, you can probably like flip that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> flip that into like some coins. It'd be like some vintage shit. Yeah. About behind the name, behind the the, goal, the vision and the names here, and trap mogul and the transition to the imperial mogul. Uh, trap mogul, I it was because of where I grew, like I literally <laughs> like grew up, quote unquote, in the trap. It may not look like it, but where like where I grew up, I grew up off Wolf Road, and the I grew up in a oh, man, going to private school <laughs> in an apartment complex that uh, you can say like a lot of drugs got sold and. Like our apartment, because of like where we were located, our apartment always used to get like raided by the police and different things like that. And I all like, like I said, like you just said, I went to private school, so I would be leaving where I lived in this fucked up situation to go in to seeing like people who had more. So I always like aspired to wanting more because I didn't want to stay broke forever. Mm. Yeah, so uh, that's one of the reasons I named it like Trap Moga. It wasn't because like selling dope and I was like trying to flip it up to like becoming rich off of it but the message like got like lost in the name because of trap because, because of, so of yeah that yeah the the stigma that goes with trap so and then on top of that having a name like trap mogul probably it probably would have like stagnated the growth of the brand so I decided to change it to something like something else and with rap like the the brand, it's it always gonna be like heavily rooted in rap, and with rap, everybody talks about how they're the king of this, the king of that. Mm -hmm. So I decided to keep uh, keep it like de uh, rooted in hip hop. So I kept I kept it with like the king angle. So I said imperial, so imperial mogul. So now that's what it is. Uh, all like I kept the the original uh, logo mm -hmm. somewhat with the tie that whenever you see it. Whenever you see the logo, you you know that's that's me because the tie is torn, mm -hmm. and they also put the the crown there, but the the, the the crown is cracked now, so they didn't want it to keep it pretty. So, the, <laughs> so I think that's dope because uh, we mentioned Blair a few times, and Blair did the first show with and you have the crown in the in the shoot. So I, I like the fact that you you, you stay into the imagery. She tell me that pussy be yours. I tell her that baby is lace. lace. You know how these feelings could change in the game some wigs. wigs. When them tents clear and your true flaws start to leak. Steady questioning, everything disbelief like Where you going? Where you going? Why close the door? When you got me open, please don't divide us. I don't need a quotient. We're sticking to the script, but now them rules are broken. Got me DQ from your love, right? You know that thing like a drug, right? And I swear that shit got me so hooked. The niggas strung out of the hit that I took. Now look, you know you just like my plug, right? And inspiration still know where we come That's on your body like I know the words To these songs I wrote Every now and verb Had a few alternatives Still your preferred So that's the, the mogul side The imperial mogul And just let us know a few things that you said Because we did talk about the shirts and the With stuff. the brand I transitioned it Transitioned again Into more than just a streetwear line I wanted it to be uh, Like a multi purpose brand so I started to deal with fashion uh, and music and then also social media content that's going to be coming in a few uh, so that's why I, with when I relaunched it and relaunched the Imperial Mogul site I I, re, uh, I launched it with a single and the single actually went on to different uh, platform um, streaming platforms other than just putting it on SoundCloud or YouTube where you can still get paid, but like if you just leave it on SoundCloud, you wouldn't be able to get, money yeah, get any money from it. Uh, so I put it on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, uh, 
title all these other popular streaming sites i actually uh got people to purchase got, got people that purchased it off how did i feel you know that like, after all you've been through you actually have people buying your music and for for really and truly this will be actually be your, your first legit single talk to me about that feeling of seeing people actually purchasing your music yeah that, that was the first the first purchase caught caught me off guard mm-hmm. and like the when it happened a few more times i was like wow it, it, it really shocked me because at first I did I was only expecting to like get like one purchase mm. off of it but so far I had like <laughs> like more people that I won't say the number yet mm. but I had more people purchase it off of iTunes than I was actually expecting and they also like supported instead of just like playing it on SoundCloud it. They, they they not only just sharing it they played it on uh, like Spotify and Apple Music so those Went to uh, went towards like streaming, giving me like money. So I was like, oh. so when they told me that that's what they were doing, so that that really made me like really appreciative, like knowing that I had people that actually were trying to support what I, what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. So that that was like a great feeling. I'll, I'll look back someday at this like at the start when I released it and seeing mm-hmm. people purchase it, and I'll always like be appreciative of this moment because I never thought it would have been like what it is now. I feel like you had really good um, foresight like, because I'm a true friend, Gina, who was in the, at the time in the Miss Bahamas competition. She actually won. She's now the Miss Bahamas. Yeah. So it's like now you have the single cover. I think Stefan did it. Yeah, Stefan did the. Yeah, Stefan Legend. He did the artwork for the cover. Uh, and it's so of Gina Thompson, the current Miss Bahamas. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. I knew she, she was in it last year, but when we were doing it, when when he was doing the actual painting, she told me said she was gonna actually re-enter it yeah, this yeah. year. So she she won. So congratulations to her. So that, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. the, that's something in history. So the, the fir- your first single cover is the is the was been the reigning Miss Bahamas. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 that's a good look. <laughs> that's a real good look. Just the last two things. Just talk to us about the EP. Um, before and then even before your EP, you was on um Adria's EP, yeah. and that's what and that was really a good probably stop gap for you while he's working. Your brush people still know, hey, Charlie's still doing music. Yeah. And talk to us about um the reason behind by the transition, the, the title and the artwork, and just talk to us about the actual music because that's at the end of the day, yeah. as good as everything is, like the actual music was important, and and, and it shows a test to you that even through all you going through, your people vouch for you, but your music backed up what everyone was saying about you, like you had quality music. 2014 when. Adria released um, Amaretto and she asked me to be on a song on it. She sent me a few beats and then she, uh, but there was this one beat. Uh, she, the actual beat, she was named Unsure. It wasn't named, uh, it was named Unsure because they, they didn't have, they didn't uh. have a title, <laughs> <laughs> title for the, for the actual beat. Yeah. I, when they sent it to me, I thought it was the title of the, the, title of the song. <laughs> so I ended up writing Based on, that based on that title uh, and when she said when I sent it back when when I told her I was done with it she told me said that wasn't actually the the, 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 the title of the song but then we ran with it because it it actually ended up being like a dope verse mm-hmm. so that got me feeling like I should get back to working on the project and during that time after like a little while after uh, the her EP dropped I ended up getting in a car accident and uh, that like near death experience had me thinking like, yo, I would have died and I wouldn't have gotten out this music. So I said, I'm gonna get back on it and try to get this music out and try to have people know that, hey, this dude does have talent and different things like that. So that's when I actually linked up with uh, Miko because I was trying to find someone that actually had access to the hill, once again, R.I.P., rest, yeah. rest in peace to the hill. So I tried to find someone that had access to the hill. I reached out to the other shoddy, and he told me, he said, uh, Miko uh, does... Miko does it by his house. Yeah, Mi- yeah Miko does does a lot of the stuff up, up to the hill. So I reached out to Miko, and that was my first time meeting him. And I started recording. At, at first, I started recording down at his house, in his room. <laughs> this be, And then, this was before I had... This was after my accident, so I didn't have access to a car. And Miko lived down the street from me, so I walked to his place. And we recorded, uh, I think, the call in his room. The call and uh, the call and We Are Not The Same. My Life Transition, we recorded way more than eight songs. The EP was eight songs long, but 
we cut most of it down because it was going to be my first project and we live in a microwave era where people don't have that long attention spans for, for, for new artists that they don't know. Because I remember mean, back in the days, you have 20 songs, you used to be excited, but now you have to give seven, eight just to get, to get a taste of who you are as an artist. Yeah, if you, if you aren't like a big name artist, don't waste your time <laughs> putting like more than 10 or 11 songs on a project because people won't listen, they'll be like, that's too much. But then they listen to like a 20 track project double, from somebody double, double, from double Drake or, or Jay-Z or something like that. But, you love you love the build you love to establish that type of fan base for that album. So what I did was cut it down to eight songs, the eight of my favorite songs, and we went with that. I got uh, a lot of positive feedback from it, but it wasn't uh, what I wanted it to be because I couldn't give it that that push that I wanted because I didn't have like the money to to really push it how I wanted it to be. Like for that project, I didn't even shoot a video for anything, which which really disappoints me which really disappointed me knowing that I could have done like a whole lot more so, like I really I really rock with someone like Vince Staples because he didn't put out a full length project until his actual album what do you think Vic Mensa as well, well no no I like no, no Vic Mensa like, he, he, no he, he he Vic Mensa he actually had a full length project remember well, the, the internet the, the internet tape yeah, yeah internet yeah. tape but with Vic Vic released Vince. straight yeah I'm sorry with Vince he released uh EP is straight up until his album. He didn't put out anything that was longer than, say, eight songs for, for any of his projects. And gradually people started to uh, gravitate to his music. So when he dropped his actual full-length project, he went with the with the 20 plus songs. <laughs> yeah, songs. Yeah, so, but I highly doubt I, I'll ever do anything like 20 plus, not not now, but, but that's, but, like I said, if you aren't like an established artist, it doesn't make any sense going past that, that 11, 10 threshold because people won't listen. So that's why, even though we recorded, I think, almost like 30 songs, I cut it down to just those eight on the project, my eight favorite. And we went, we went, we put it out, and I got a lot of positive feedback from it. Even though it wasn't uh, pushed how I was supposed to push it, I didn't have like, a actual budget to do anything. Right, right, right. I didn't. I was. I didn't do any videos for any of the songs, which kind, of, which is kind of like disappointing. So now that I'm working on something new, I I'm trying to give it like an, a real push. So I'm gonna do videos, actual like uh, campaigns to uh, promote different songs from the project. Because even though I have out this current single now, I still have more things that I'm about to release in the coming weeks so I have like a lot of things that lined that lined up that, that I think is gonna be dope to end the L. And they sure did relationship at the forefront confused never thought this blind side I never saw it coming to this all this time passed I'm still coming to grips do something to miss fell hard was running the trip all over you that's raw pain like son of a bitch smile is mine I swear to God I need something to strip these vivid memories at times I spent inside you you telling me I gave you what they can't provide you I thought that shit was gospel straight up by the Bible Bishop T.D. Jakes Lord knows we need a revival of what we had make it what we had but nothing like at first this time will make it last Fucking decision, time be moving fast Cause if we wait too long we'll let this moment pass We're talking about the decision to take permanent music off of my, my life transition And then also change the beat and like repackage it for this new project you've coming out uh, per with permanent muse, when I released the EP last year, it was one of the the main songs that people always came back to me and said, "Yo, this this song is is dope." It got like a lot of downloads, even though like I I didn't expect it. It it wasn't one of my favorite songs at the. T it was one of my favorite songs that made the the project, so but it was wasn't your favorite at the top. Eight. At, at the top. Yeah. But after a while, like more and more people kept coming to me about the song. I started to listen to it more and I realized like, yo, this song is really, really good. So I said, whenever I decided to do a full length album that I would keep Permanent Muse because not only because people liked it, because it grew into one of my favorite songs that I ever wrote. So I said I would keep it and put it uh, on my full length project and give it like a proper push. So that's why I kept it. But the reason that I had to change the beat, because the, the original producer 
he didn't he didn't uh, want to give me exclusive rights uh. to the beat because he said someone in his circle actually wanted to keep it even because I was leasing the beat. Mm. So when I yeah, so when I so when I uh, so when I reached out to him and he told me what was going on that someone uh, in his circle wanted to keep the original beat, I said. I can't wait that long to, to find out if he's gonna let the be, yeah keep it or not. So I went to PC, who's been like my boy for years and years. So I reached out to him and I asked him if he'd be able to make a new beat for me for 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 one of the songs from the EP. He told me that'd be no problem. So him and uh, God Sticks they got together and they. Whipped up magic. Now I love this current version of the more. song more. I, I, I did listen to both of them. I, yeah. I enjoyed this one better. Yeah, I, I love this version way more than the original one. So, shouts out to PC and God Sticks. But yeah, if I didn't did what I did, I wouldn't have been able to put the song and on on, on to, sell. to sell. Yeah. So, and like I said, Imperial Mogul is now uh, also a record label. So I wanted to make sure that I would be able to sell my my music. So I couldn't just leave the the single off of uh, platforms like Apple Music and Spotify, so I had to do what I had to do. To, business, business decision. Yeah, business decision to get it uh, on those platforms so I'd be able to actually make money off of it. And like I said earlier, people actually purchased the single, so the the decision was, was a lot. And, and, and that's a lot of things I actually look into, like when they're making songs, look, look ahead, look the fact that you can make money off of it because you can't sell other people beats. Yeah. You can make money off of other people's songs that you don't, unless you pay, unless you own the beat, you pay for the beat exclusively. <clears throat> Just talk to me about what you have up the rest of your, like I said, you know, you have Imperial Mogul is now up, you have the single, maybe you have a project. Just talk to me about what, sh what sh SP dress up do for the rest of the year. Uh, right now, I'm working on the single Permanent Muse. That's, I'm using that as like sort of the first single for this current project that I'm working on. I may release it late. 2017 or early 2018 I haven't made a decision yet the project is called God's Bear Life and it's keeping in with that whole my life transition thing now now that with yeah the yeah, like that. yeah with uh, the fact that now that I'm transitioning into like a new into like new lanes and uh, new places in life uh, hopefully like my vision comes to fruition Law, uh, the vision that I have comes to fruition and I live long enough to see it through so that's why I, I named it God's Bear Life because you know here everything is God's Bear Life for when, when you making plans for the future so yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's so that's why I actually named the project God's Bear Life uh, Permanent Muse first single uh, next coming weeks I have this marketing campaign uh, Three uh, someone from Three Amigos actually worked on on uh, the campaign with me, uh, your your business partner Mick. Sh shout out, shout out to the the plugs. Yeah, so Mick, uh, we did he did something for me that I won't <laughs> that I won't just look for, just yeah. look just look for it. Yeah, just look for it in the next couple in the next coming weeks. Uh, video for Permanent Muse. By the time this is uh, this drops, the video will be out. I have another single that is gonna be released in the next coming weeks, uh, and then of course. The actual clothing that's gonna be released around the same time that I drop the project, so all this, so all that's gonna tie in. So hopefully, uh, all of this works out. Like I have it planned up, so like I have a lot of things lined up. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, for the end of the year and early 20, 2018. So we'll see how that how that goes. Before I do the last thing, where I actually give you social media, um, so a friend of mine, Bahama Bowles, Victoria Lightburn, she asked me um, yesterday to partner with me for so every artist that comes to my show gets one of the bowls. Um, so the first one was Julian Believer, he's a singer, so Shadi, you'll be the first rapper to get a bow. And I told her who it was for, and you know, he does the trap boga line, so she made a, you'll see it as a camouflage bow tie for him. So even when he's dressing up, if he go in the suit, he still, he still that, that trap feel him. Thank you, thank you. What, what's the name again? Um, Bahama Boas, Victoria, because of Vicky. All right, Bahama Boas, thank you for the tie. I appreciate it. The camouflage is real dope, so I'll probably rock this with something. I'll make sure to tag you on the show, social media and tell you thank you. This is, this is actually dope. Get this in right there. And she made it just for him. So, guys, um, Bahama Boas, um, so every house you see, male or female, you'll be getting your own bow ties. Let people know where they can find you on social media. 
on social media, uh, on Twitter and Instagram uh, and Facebook. You can find me at S B X I M P E R I A L uh, with uh, Snapchat. You can find me at SB underscore dread. Uh, again, I'll repeat it again because some people will, may probably won't get it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SB, X, I, M, P, E, R, I, A, L, Snapchat, SB underscore dread. This is SB dread. Tell me, you watch it. Who that? Look out for that permanent muse music video coming soon. Young nigga, no, I ain't just some nigga. Neo to the matrix in this game. I'm the one nigga. My town, I run nigga. Like I'm fresh about the starting block. So when you talking hate, yo, I got a lot. Like a car dealer, homie, I am far realer than these other niggas. Ask around, my repertoire's iller. I am Godzilla compared to these many me. Show sure respect, your nuts ain't as big as these. The future, but I ain't yelling free bands. Hustle full time, you niggas freelance. Money over here, gripping racks in each hand. Them hunters be a power sword, and I'm feeling like he man. I have the power, my state of a tyrant. Overthrow your throne, my niggas wildin'. That's fair and that's silence. I know by how less they speak. These old heads see me coming like my sex tape leaked. I'm that nigga, dread.